then and then he <laughs> says to Alex, "Hey, wait for me outside. I need to chat with my brother." She goes outside. He it's comes so out. Confusing. He comes <laughs> out, and she said, "Jonathan, what did you do to Alfie?" Nothing. He just lost his appetite. Uh, and he goes, oh, he had a change of heart. He's going to work on it tonight. And Beat she's like, what did him. you do to him? And he goes, oh, he just lost his appetite. And I was like, oh, my God. This guy 100% is, like, abusive to his brother. Like, I don't yeah. know how else you just read that the scene. Shit out of the other <laughs> Hello, welcome back to the 145th episode of Good, Better, Bad, Bad Show. Where I share what we tell you should, too. I'm your host, Mr. Brian Chilligo, joined, as always, by the other host of this prestigious show, Mr. Kyle Hitton. Hi. Kyle Episode 145, this is a Kyle pick. It's a classic Kyle pick. A (laughs) mid-90s action Uh, martial arts film. Honestly, looking back at it, I don't know what I was thinking. I I know what I was thinking. It was the shitty martial arts. Yes. Yes. Uh, But, you know, it's got spies. It's got espionage, CIA operatives. It's got Russians. It's got Russians. Evil Russians. It's actually not evil in this one. True. But it's got, like, our our head Russian dude who we see throughout the film looks like Mike Dicka. Yeah. (laughs) He's the the coach. The coach is with the Russians. (laughs) I don't know how you do a Chicago by way of Russian accent would be tough. I can't. I'm not even going to try um, yeah, uh, the movie is 1996's Subterfuge. So, the, I don't know, how'd you find this? This was the one I, um, I'm trying to remember how, I, I, felt, I was looking up just like random B actors and stuff like that, mm-hmm. and, uh, <laughs> Sorry, I just fixed the mic. Uh, They're good. Uh, Eat the mic. Kyle. This was uh, this was a guy who I found who did a lot of stunts, and I was like, he's "Yeah, a, he's an actor in a few movies." Yeah, I, that's what I, I. So I looked up at the guy, the I, main character. I can understand why this guy does stunts. Yeah, he is not a fight chore- choreographer at all. Uh, yeah, there's some not so great stuff throughout the film. <laughs> But I will say that there's also some fine stuff. But yes, some of the choreography is lacking, shall we say. But yeah, this guy looked him up. I'm trying to remember his name now. But he plays uh, Slade. Jonathan Slade. Jonathan Slade in this. And he is uh, he's a, mainly a stunt uh, performer. But he was also, like you said, he's had a, he was in Matrix Reloaded as like an agent. Mm-hmm. Um, and then a handful of other movies. He was in like John. He's been in a lot of jo- like the John Wick movie. Um, the first one, I don't know. I mean, if he's he's little, little, in fact, he's just a ripped guy who can do stunts. Yes, That's and he's been in a lot of stuff doing stunts, which is cool. And he's pretty good at them. He's very. Uh, and I have a, mm-hmm. I have a, I have a review for this film that I'm going to read at the very end, Kyle. That is <laughs> delightful. We'll get there. <laughs> um, but he's a. He's also like. Uh, ex Navy scuba diver, uh, ex Olympic swimmer, uh, which we'll talk Olympic about. Swimmer. We'll talk about that. It's one of my favorite scenes in the whole oh. movie. We'll get to that. It's right at the beginning, so we'll get to it very momentarily. Uh, but as soon as the movie opens, I knew we were in for a treat because you get that classic mid '90s like MIDI military like um, thriller music where it's like. Like and it, and, it, and mm-hmm. but it's all it's all MIDI or whatever and it sounds it, it's like every Steven Seagal soundtrack to every mm-hmm. movie he made in the nineties. I love oh, it God, so much. Opening credit. Okay. Also, if you're gonna have this mu- mu- uh, music, uh, don't just leave opening credits on black. <laughs> it's kind of boring. Yes. Yes. It's literally just white text on a black screen, and not doing anything interesting with their opening credits. But then we open to our initial. Uh, our, our cold open, which is a, a plane mm-hmm. flying through the air, and I was immediately given, getting air panic uh, yes. flashbacks, yes. and I was really hoping we were going to get the same kind of ending to that, which we kind of do, uh, in terms of, uh, although not the same kind of green screen horrifying nightmare shots of the plane <laughs> flying into that building. I'm strike another plane. <laughs> but um, we, we're, we're introduced to all these characters that are on a plane and they're flying through some turbulence. And there's one guy on this plane who's handcuffed to a briefcase. Yes. 
And that's, that's how you know whatever he has is important. Yes, we don't know what it is. It's not explained until the very end of the movie. We'll get there. But um, he's handcuffed to a briefcase, and there's like a little girl who's like looking at him, like, "What's your deal?" and stuff. But I, love, and I don't know if this is standard procedure, Kyle. But at one point they hit some turbulence. As I said, they're flying through a storm, and the pilot's like, "I'm gonna try to go up or whatever." But then he ends up putting the plane into and autopilot, autopilot and gets, gets up <laughs> and walks. And at- just starts mingling with first class. So, uh, we're experiencing some turbulence. Turbulence. It's you like, know, when you have a lack of control of an aircraft in the sky. I, if I'm one of those passengers, I'm like, why are you out here? <laughs> Shouldn't you be in there? <laughs> it's so weird. And now, to be fair, he gets right back into the cockpit. He's only out for a minute or two. Mm. But it's so weird. I've never. Because, like, clearly, because, like, all everybody that we see on this plane, clearly this has to be first class seating. Yeah. Because there ain't no way you're yeah. in that comfortable. Yeah, it's of first seating. class or business class. Yeah, yeah for sure. <laughs> And he, but he's just chatting with everybody. <laughs> what is going on? Um, but he gets back into the cockpit. And I love, they're trying to, his co pilot or whatever, the navigator is trying to communicate with yeah, the crowd. Yeah, radio's basically he sa- dead. He says, my favorite. Try another frequency. I've tried them all. The lightning must have short circuited the radio. The lightning must have short circuited the radio. I'm like, I don't know That's, a lot about okay. planes, but I do I'm know. I'm pretty sure they're highly insulated. <laughs> There's no way, like, I don't know how, there's almost a 0% chance a lightning storm is knocking out there. If a lightning's (laughs) going to fry the radio, guess what else is going to fry? You! All kinds of stuff. Yeah, it's really bad. Lightning strikes hit planes all the time, and it doesn't do any, like, it just Mm. doesn't matter. Like, it's fine. Um, It has to be really crazy for something bad to happen, but it short circuits their radio. Um, and then they decide they need to reroute the plane because they're not going to make. I don't know why they decide. I guess the storms are too bad. And yeah, they're they're, trying to I land they're trying somewhere. To land in some city in Russia. Stuttgart. Right? They, they're redirecting from wherever they were going to Stuttgart. Yes. And when they put the coordinates in, we see a shady person in mm-hmm. a room like in the middle, like high hacks into the plane and changes the coordinates, which I think mm. is the same thing that happens in air panic, right? Uh, he, I think he hacks he and lit- changes. Yeah, yeah, but he like literally oh, takes yes, control with true. his shit. And then he gets a joystick, joystick <laughs> and flies the plane. But yeah, that does not happen in this So, the, But they're, the, they're turning into Russian airspace. Yes, and it flies them into air, Russian airspace. And so Russia scram. Oh, real quick, I got to talk about this moment because this is pre-9-11 movie, which uh, there's oh, this that, moment. That kid, that kid who yes, walks in the air like a cockpit. A little kid. <laughs> Just opens the door of the cockpit and walks in with the toy gun, gun and shoots and the pilot. The pilot and the pilot's like, "Hey, get that guy out of here!" And it's like, "Oh my god!" Bang! You got me. It truly was the wild, wild west. Hey, Timmy, uh, ever seen the cockpit of a plane before? <laughs> ever seen a grown man naked? <laughs> It's just, I love the idea that this kid could just wander into the cockpit yes. of a plane that is actively like being great, piloted through a great storm. Great security, great supervision. <laughs> yes, it's amazing. Um, anyways, so then they're getting redirected, and they're they, so they're in Russian airspace. Russia sees the plane and scrambles fighter jets. They're like, what the fuck is going on? Yeah. Um, and then, but they figure out very quickly, yeah, oh, it's, it's a it's, commercial yeah, like, it's, airliner. It's not armed. It's too large. The radio's to, not working. Yeah. So we're trying to commute something. So, so like, he, yeah, yeah. D- don't shoot it down. We'll, we'll guide them or something like like that the radio probably out due to electrical storm request permission to make visual contact yes yes tell him to use his flare yeah he's telling the, the the fighter pilot like don't shoot him down just like uh shoot a flare to like try to communicate or something whatever uh and but our again our shady person yes. in the room is inter inters uh <laughs> intercutting all these transmissions and it, tells him to by shoot the way the, the this plane. room that they're in this <laughs> command center or whatever it, it's like if they got like a big TV switchboard or whatever. Yeah. And then you have these other things in the back, which are just arcade cabinets. They're 100% cabinets. arcade cabinets. Okay, Kyle, I had a note that I was like, <laughs> why does our shady evil layer just have arcade cabinets that I think have been repurposed into hacker? They got turtles and turtles in time. <laughs> yes. And like... Uh, <laughs> Like Namco or something over here. Yeah, uh, yeah. It, it, uh, what, what year is it? Ninety six. Yeah, Turtles in Time would be up. Maybe it's the Simpsons game. Isn't Simpsons and the Turtles in Time game like basically the same game, whoa, just reskinned? Whoa, whoa. <laughs> it's that good. <laughs> Anyways, I mean, yeah, I saw those arcade cabinets. I was like, what the fuck? My thing, I think, because looking at them with all the lights, I think they're probably actually like, um, uh, like, like casino machines mm. or something. Cause they have all these extra. I don't know. They look a little they got bit different. They repurposed, than, obviously. Yes, but yeah. They they are they are built. You like, cannot hide what they are. Yes, they are some sort of arcade cabinet for sure. Absolutely. Um. So he he enter he like I said this shady person who we don't see who it is basically has the the fighter pilot shoot the plane down. 
He's like, fire. And then that guy just blows up a commercial airliner. Yeah, the, uh, the model they use, it, it's pretty oh, great because it, like, yeah. it dangles on the wires. So oh, like, yeah. it blows up and yeah. then it just kind of dangles kinda a little there. bit. I, like, oh. I also yeah. love, too, just for going back, when the Russians first see the plane in the airspace, they like all ruddle, run and huddle around like a computer. Mm -hmm. And then it, the computer just generates a, a 3D image of the plane flying like at the screen. And then they're like, oh no, code yellow. And I'm like, it's what? coming right at us. Yeah, what is that computer doing? <laughs> like, what is What was that? It's hey, so coach, uh, what are we going to do about this plane? <laughs> well, I don't know. It looks like. Com why I don't know why I'm sounding <laughs> even more north. Yeah, now it's now you're going into Fargo. Yeah. 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 Uh, uh, which there was somebody in this movie was in the Fargo series. Interesting. I think. I'm pretty sure. We'll get there. Uh, we're about to be introduced. I think it's this guy. We'll get anyways. Um, so they blow up the plane. Like you said, great miniature shot. It's fantastic. Um, they also like drop the debris and stuff and just to just like a pool clearly yes <laughs> yes just, well i will say those shots are actually kind of effective it is clearly like a pool mm -hmm. but i did enjoy like we see the plane blow up and then we cut down underwater and like stuff is they're, falling they're, into like the water. like yeah it's good that they're using practical stuff because yeah. god forbid if they ever tried to do this with yeah CGI. yeah especially in there, there's just like there's a certain scaling issue especially when with like waves and water yeah where it's just like, it does look really obvious and there's some shots later on that are very clearly like an aquarium but we'll, <laughs> oh, yeah. we'll get there no eventually kidding. but um but like i liked at least that i thought there was some good like creepy like we mm. see the doll the little girl had falls yeah. into the water and then the body of the guy with the briefcase falls into the water and sinks down and the briefcase goes past the camera. And I thought that part was like moderately effective. If not, like you said, clearly like in a swimming pool or whatever. Um, also, I, there's this great moment where Ditka, the Russian, uh, Russian the general, Russian he's, he's like, get on the radio with him. And he pulls the headset off the guy and listens to it. And is like, damn, the radio's jammed. Goddamn special teams. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mike, why are you in such a bad mood? What do you care? Good. Okay. If you were two and seven, you'd be in a bad mood too. You can't get down to the side. <laughs> his, his, his offensive coordinator, he wants a word with them. Um, yeah, anyway, so uh, th then we're, we're getting to the point where we, they're explaining now, we're moving in to, uh, we cut, we move forward, and we're at like the CIA or whatever. <laughs> And uh, our one of this, and I don't know this guy's name, uh, the blonde guy. It's he like reminds me so much of Ma was it Max Head something? You, Max you know? Headroom? I think so. The, yeah. The that. It, well, that's it, actually it, really interesting. You say that because Alex, the woman, was on the show Max Headroom Ooh, in the eighties. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I don't know. That's crazy because his hair's like it's like back and then yeah, like, it's parted, like, like, and, like yeah. parted. Yeah, parted. It is a little way. similar to Max Headroom. Yeah. <laughs> But yeah, the, uh, Alex, that actress, she That's was on insane. Max Headroom. I'm just randomly scrolling through her credits, saw that. Um, anyways, he uh, so th we're, he's talking to like his, you know, le whoever captain or something, um, wh whatever they're called in <laughs> in the CIA. And this actor, I don't know if you recognized him. This guy I was he like, I recognize familiar. this guy. His uh, the actor's name is Glenn Turman, and he's been in all kinds of stuff. Uh, probably most famously, he's in quite a bit of um, The Wire. He's the mayor in. Mm -hmm one of the seasons or two of the seasons or something Gee. like that. I want DPW and HCD out there today tearing down all coquetti signs. He was also in Super 8 um, and uh, a show called A Different World. But I know him best, and the reason he stuck out in my brain is because I've watched Scrubs a million times, and there's one episode of Scrubs, like the first couple seasons, where there's this patient who's dying, and Turk and JD like hang out with him all night and just like talk to him, and it's that actor. Anyway, I think they have like a steak All with right, them or something. Like, I, yeah, yeah. Anyways, I was like, his name's George on Scrubs, if you remember that episode. But it's that actor. Uh, but he's been in all kinds of stuff. You scroll through, he's been on ER mm -hmm. like a million things. Um, he, he definitely is the, the kind of guy, like they, they perfectly cast yes, him, by the way. Yes, he's like, great as that kind of character. Government, military, kind of, like it wouldn't surprise me if he was in endless sci-fi crap throughout yes. the 2000s. Yeah, um, but he uh, I, he's talking to this, whatever, his name's like Tersel or something, whatever the blonde. Ten Tensel? Tensel, something like that. And he's talking to him and he's like, so we got to get that black box. There was a little box on the plane that the guy had. We got to get it back. And again, this is the thing that was handcuffed and we don't know what it is. Mm -hmm. and well, this, because they keep saying black box box. 
black box, and you're like, oh, oh, the plane's black box. Black no, box. the other, like a different, this black mm -hmm. box that the guy had, whatever. They know about the box. I don't think so. But whoever overrode their system knows plenty. Um, but I love that Tinsel's like, he's like, or the term is like, we need Slade on this one. And Tinsel's like, it's bringing in Slade that I object to. And I can handle this mission myself. I don't need any help. I can take it. I'm I'm pretty good. And he's like, no. And he's like, Tinsel was... <laughs> You guys were both Olympic swimmers. They yes. were both Olympic swimmers. Yes. But Tinsel won the silver every time, and Slade okay. won the gold every time. And I apparently, mean, they need the world's best swimmer I'm for no, this mission. I, I'm no expert in aquatic sports, <laughs> but how does how does uh, Olympic swimming translate to scuba diving salvaging? Well, and uh, I mean, uh, like, it's important to be a strong swimmer, I guess, for this mission, because you are scuba diving mm -hmm. and whatnot. But the difference in the ability between the person who won the gold medal yeah. at the Olympics and the person who won the silver medal at the Olympics is so fairly minuscule that I don't think it's going to be the difference between... Well, it's not between... like they're getting, like, Phelps and Lockie or something like that. Well, I just, that's what I'm saying. It's like, it's not like that guy's that much better of a swimmer to where our guy, other guy doesn't even know how to swim. He was winning the silver medal in the yeah. He's fine. I think he can handle it. He's but somebody anyway. that you don't have to outsource. Yeah. Uh, but so they got to hire this guy. Um, and also, I love there's a line at the end of this where he's like, and remember, this is super secret. It's classified double red. <laughs> this mission is classified double red. <laughs> classified double You're red. You're on double secret probation. <laughs> exactly. It's like, okay. Um, then we're introduced to Slade. We cut to a bar. Uh, and we're introduced to Slade, who's hanging out at the bar with his brother Alfie, who I, I didn't realize till like way later is his brother, not just like his friend or whatever. Um, but he's hanging out with his brother Alfie, and this guy starts shit with him, and he punches the racism out of him or whatever. <laughs> Uh, so uh, but he beats the shit out of all these guys in the bar. Like it starts off, it starts off with just a conflict between him and the guy who and the one guy, who, on his yeah, head. pours the beer on his head. And then he twists his arm and gets him into a hold, and just immediately kicks somebody else. Nope. Like, that guy wasn't even involved <laughs> in this. It's like, hey man, what did I? Do? I was playing ball. <laughs> And he grabs the pool sticks and just starts. Well, and I'm convinced, actually, oh, we'll talk about fighter. it more later. <laughs> well, yeah, there's that. But I'm convinced that our main hero is just an asshole. Like, oh, yeah. well, like you said, he just starts beating up random people in this bar apart from the guy who started the fight with them. But later, there's a scene that doesn't go anywhere that's only mentioned that I am fairly certain implies that our main character is an abusive asshole <laughs> to his brother. We'll get there. But I am like 99% sure that's the implication of a scene like Jonathan, what did you do to Alfie? Nothing. He just lost his appetite. Later. I do like how the barkeep is keeping a tab on all the shit that's getting broke. <laughs> that's, that is pretty funny. The barkeep's in the back, like, ringing things up as they're breaking, which I thought was a fun gag. There's also a throwaway line where he's like, they're because they're watching the news, and then that's what starts the fight initially, is they change it uh, from an action movie to the news or vice versa. And <laughs> our hero goes... Uh, I want to watch the news, and the guy's like, I'm watching that movie, and he's, our hero goes, You've seen one action movie, you've seen them all. You've seen one action movie, you've seen them all. Oh and boy, I was like, ain't oh, that the fuck truth. you. <laughs> you can't make that joke in this movie. God damn it. Um, so like I said, he just beats the shit out of everybody. Uh, and then he needs to pay for it, and this is yes, where we're and this is where yeah, this is where we're introduced to Alfie's talent, which is hacking. And we get super straight, sick hacker. <laughs> we get straight out of Terminator Two. He goes up to an ATM and yeah. hacks it for cash. And he has literally like a freaking old school like uh, an adding machine that you mm -hmm. see at like the tax office, or you know, in movies where they're like chug, 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 and he swipes the card and he's is just, able he's to just push it in. He literally is pushing in random sixteen digit numbers, yeah. and see what bank account pops, and up. then is getting random bank accounts and he ends up finding one that has a you know, few thousand dollars in it and takes some money out. Um, but yeah, well, again, that's the point. We're introduced to the fact that he's a hacker, and meanwhile, he's being surveilled by some dude while mm -hmm. this is all happening. Um, and, and then, so now that's all set up. Then we cut back, 
to and I, I I think it's the Russians are discussing what happened to the plane, <laughs> and there's this line. Which, by the way, th- this th- this older guy is amazing. This, th- this has got to be the most fun scene, like yes. like for for a guy of their time and their era, <clears throat> because it's literally you're sitting in this room, smoking cigars, drinking whiskey, and talking doing about like it. yeah, crappy <laughs> Russian accents. We and the Americans are the only ones with that kind of technology. We didn't do it. It's great because I'm pretty sure this guy's American. I think, or because because oh, yeah. that actor, the older guy, like who's I don't know who he's supposed to be, but like head of the KGB or something mm-hmm. like that. Um, he's he's was in a bunch of episodes of Law and Order as a judge. <laughs> he was played a, which he's got a great, <laughs> you know, his, exactly, either, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Um, cause I, I, and I'd seen him in something else too, but yeah, that guy. Um, but anyway, so they're discussing and they have this line about what happened to the plane and how the radio was jammed. And the guy goes, <laughs> what does he say? He says, the only way our community, or the, your, cause he's talking about how he was trying to, the one guy was trying to communicate with the, the fighter pilot and couldn't, mm-hmm. and they're trying to figure out what happened there. And he says, the only way your commands to the pilot could have been superseded is by using satellite lasers. What? It's just nonsense. Oh, they just, yes. And they're like, and the only people who have satellite lasers is us in the U.S. So it's got to be the U.S. or whatever. Satellite. Like why would they lasers. blow up their own plane? Yeah. So they're trying to figure out what's going on. And again, that's kind of the thing here: is the U.S. doesn't know what's going on. Russia doesn't know what's going on. It turns out it's because there's a third party involved mm-hmm. in all these. Well, kind of. Okay, yeah. Yeah. Um, so then Tinsel goes to recruit Slade. <laughs> And he, he shows up and he finds just, him. Alfie tells him he's yeah. out like crew joyriding around in his boat or whatever. And he shows up and he, our guy Slade basically teaches scuba diving lessons to beautiful women is like his job apparently and just sleeps with them or something. And he's on the boat with these women. <laughs> Tensel shows, shows up. Shows up with a g- freaking grenade. He throws a grenade into the boat. <laughs> and they all jump off. The, he almost murders three just random people yep. who were just hanging out with this guy. Oh, it's incredible. Um, the, the, that hard cut of the boat blowing up and Slade running, uh, just getting out of the water, yeah. and running up and just punching the dude. Yes. It is hilarious. It's amazing. <laughs> There's so many hard cuts that just, like, they clearly didn't get everything they needed and were just like, oh, shit, let's just slam well, I, it together. I think for some of it, they had, like, corrupt, they had corrupt, I would say corrupt footage, but, like, like they had they just lost bad, footage or bad, yeah, like, they were... Yeah. Maybe something happened with the exposure or something because they did a lot of exposure tricks in this movie. Yeah, who knows? Yeah. Yeah, I, it's very possible. But yeah, I love too. He goes up and he punches him. And then the guy's like, hey, calm down. It's like, you, you just, blew up my boat. You almost killed me. You almost me. murdered my the, the, customers. The yes. <laughs> what do you mean, calm like, down? Here, here's $8,000. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. Now, there's no harm done. We just wanted to get your attention. That's all. You calm down. I'll fucking kill you. Um, and he will. Spoilers. <laughs> uh, so then he's like, well, I'm not helping you. He's like, here, I'll pay for your boat or I'll take the money for the boat, but I'm not helping you guys. I'm, not, I'm out. I'm out of the, I'm out of the game. And- you know, thanks for thinking of me, but no thanks. I'm a civilian now. You're going to work with us, Jonathan. I just know it. He goes back to his surf shop or scuba shop. Although, although I did find out something that apparently Kelly Blue Book appraises his boats, too. Apparently, the guy does go through very explicit detail of how much his boats were because of he looked up the Kelly Blue Book value or something. <laughs> very weird. Um, but they like they uh, they basically raided his business because Alfie has been hacking. Yes. And now he's they're using Alfie as leverage to get him. To come help them they're like alfie's gonna sit in rotten he's prison a, if you don't come home so he's in lockup right now yeah oh, I'm, I'm assuming waiting a trial date or something whatever yeah uh but <laughs> none of it matters because it's all well, just a, like the a, way this scene ends that uh jonathan's just like yeah fuck you alfie go go sit in jail for a bit sorry little brother not this time yeah but then it cuts and he's just out yep. the next scene. Yep. He's out of prison and helping them on the... I think we like, may have been missing something yeah, there. Yeah, I feel but like okay. we might have been missing because it literally goes from in prison where he's like, just stay here and think about what you've done to out helping on a secret mission. Okay, sure. Um, and then as he's helping... <laughs> the, as they're they're in the office, uh, like learning the details of the mission they're going to be going on and alfie explains oh everything he needs <laughs> it's just it's all this technical so garbage jargony bullshit at one point he says something along the lines of 
I'm going to need at least four parallel processors, which have got to transform at least a million triangles per second. Can you remember that? And then I'm going to need um, cryptology software. Have you heard of that? I'm going to need a computer that can transform a thousand triangles per second or something like that. And I don't know what that means. He's got to have quad something. <laughs> he does quad say RAM something. quad uh, like process. I don't know. He says something ridiculous. And some of it may be real. Some of it may be not. I don't know. Uh, but then he's also like, and I need cryptology software and they're like cryptology software and i'm like that just means like yeah like hack like you just need like yeah like coding software of some sort whatever like a brute force program or whatever something? i don't whatever. know it's just so silly they just try to make everything sound super cool um so now they're on their way to uh somewhere in russia or near russia so they're you know, they're Turkey. in they're in the black sea and they are uh what is it they go to some resort is it kazakhstan that's to the south of russia i don't know i do not know anyways my geography is off but Mine's point being is they're not quite in Russia. No, they're like on the border. But they're at some resort town in the Black Sea. Yeah, and their guy brings them into the resort. And it's like this weird tourist trap that's like just full of Americans. Yes. I don't know. It's yes. so strange. But it's because it's, it's clearly they filmed it in like uh, Florida they're, they're or something. Their tour guide might be my favorite character of this whole movie. <laughs> yeah, he's great. He's in like two scenes and gets <laughs> murdered, but he's ridiculous. He's just a ridiculous character. Lots of girls. Beautiful. <laughs> Big tits makes me crazy every day. Um, That's the craziest eyebrows he on has the planet. Pretty insane eyebrows. And the uh, we're also we see like this guy in all black, like a sleeveless black tee with a black goatee and ponytail and sunglasses, <laughs> who we'll eventually find out is like working for our big bad villain who gets revealed later. Um, but they just say they explain that they need a boat. <clears throat> they need and they're talking, I don't know who they tell they need a boat, but they're able it's to gotta, get... It's got to be super stealth and super... Super you know, fast or yeah, whatever. everything. A boat? Yeah, a boat. The kind that your friends use to run drugs from Turkey to the Russian mainland. The kind that can't be detected by radar, Mr. Salazar. A boat. And, they, and the way they're going to get this boat is by basically running a tax... Uh, evasion like they're bringing a, a a guy who's a drug runner in on like tax evasion charges yes. they're gonna al capone him or whatever so that they can commandeer his super sweet boat i guess okay Sh sure you might want to look at this mr salazar your tax returns for the past 10 years sir boy you sure have a lousy accountant but they go to pick up this boat, boat. and it's 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 just a hollowed. It's, it's basically just, just yeah, it's, boat. it's just a sport it's a hollowed out fiberglass sports boat <laughs> But he Which says, <laughs> makes sense, kind of, because yeah, of how radar works. Fair, yeah, fair enough. But I love that he says, <laughs> he says, well, there isn't an electronic surveillance system that can track it. I mean, as long as we stay low, we're invisible. There are mufflers built in. <laughs> and my favorite thing is, stay low. It's a boat, boat. motherfucker. It doesn't <laughs> get much. Typically, they don't get much lower. Yeah, what do you? We're, we're gonna do a you, lot of flying with that yeah. boat. <laughs> you, you usually need like a boat with a cab to maybe be tall. Yeah, I don't understand what that even means. As long as we stay low, it's a okay. Yeah. You okay. If it was like a high, if it was like a one of those hydrofoils that stays like super super low, maybe. I don't know. None of it makes any sense. As long as we stay low, you're in a boat. Fuck oh, off. Okay. Um. But then they get back from test driving the boat and the the, <laughs> the, the, the the drug dealers turn on them. Yeah, they're like, we want more money and we want all your money. So they get into a fight with all these guys. They just start murdering them all. And we are introduced to Alex. She just starts shooting them. She starts shooting yes. everybody. And she comes running in in a camo tank top and like hat. It looks like she's like, she's like, eh, it's every bad movie's like, version of I'm a commando. It's yeah. Just, but I, legitimately versus the other people, she has no qualms killing like no. left and right. Yeah. Well, see, we find out she's all she's CIA special op. Like she's got like a million, you know, they go through her background at mm. one point and she's got a million different, you know, black ops backgrounds or whatever. Marine Corps, major elite strike force, a CIA operative, El Salvador, Lebanon, anti-terrorist unit. But she just starts shooting everybody, and our, our guy does get into a sweet knife fight at the end, and ends up like stabbing a guy in the leg and then slicing his throat. Yes. <laughs> it's pretty great. Um, but she sh comes in and saves the day, uh, and then it just that scene just ends, and then we jump to the, a scene like a, a, a little bit later, and our guy's just lounging on the beach, and 
all of a sudden he's almost assassinated. Yeah, again, yes. And she comes, I, I am convinced. I was like, what? Th they either had a horrible, horrible, like, filming experience where they just lost a bunch of yeah, people. Yeah, right. Or that somebody came one of, somebody came in one of the produ like heavy like higher up producers was like you got to cut this this and this we don't have time or budget to do any of this yeah. so make it work or or they they last minute decided to add more action and so they're like uh we it, can film a scene on the beach where he almost gets shot in like an hour i don't maybe, know i, I don't it, know it, it feels so like there it feels like there's more removed versus yes, added i would agree i i would tend to agree with that uh because yeah she comes running across the beach and like tackles him out of his beach chair as he gets almost gets sniped and i was like what is this how, where how did we get here it's so strange um and then uh then it cuts and i love <laughs> that we're they're investigating I believe it's all of the, the 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 drug people they murdered are Russian general guys just on the beach in his full dress regalia, yeah. <laughs> like so, touching dead bodies. No, and no, stuff. So what, what that? What, what oh, was that? The that plane was, crash? Uh, no, that was the the shark the the shark attacks. Shark attacks. Yeah. Okay. So like, wait, they, 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 wait, they, wait, wait what? On. The one you're referring to is they they got this bloodied guy, right? Right, and it's the Russian, the two Russian guys are like, yep, that's a bloodied guy. That's a bloody dead person. I, I think there's one point where he's on the beach and there's bodies around and he's like investigating one and then he stands up and he's chatting with the old guy and I thought it was the the drug people that our mm. guys had murdered and then I thought maybe actually it's people that had from the no, plane no. accident. These are shark. There's they're searching in shark infested waters and this is one of their divers who got eaten by like bit by a shark. Is that what it is? Yeah, I missed that entirely. I missed that that was the context of that scene entirely. I'm pretty. Sure. Congratulations. Your expert divers found the school of sharks. <laughs> I'll take your word for we'll, it. We'll find out when in post how wrong both of us probably are. I will take your word for it. I missed that completely. Um, but then, so now it's time for our guy to go do some scuba diving investigating. And I will say, kudos to this movie. They shot some actual underwater stuff of the you know it's definitely not an aquarium now all of the animals are a hundred percent they went down to the local yes. uh, aquarium and just filmed through the glass or whatever of all of these animals so ridiculous it looks really bad my my, uh, my favorite one is they get a shot uh from below of, of uh, like a manta ray swimming yeah. or whatever a shark swimming and you can clearly see the overhead lights yeah. through the water. Yeah, it's pretty great. It's pretty great. Um, and then they have a, they're t also testing their new technology, which is like a Morse code system where he can like tap his earpiece to Morse code, communicate with Alfie. Mm -hmm. and, and then Alfie, so Alfie's like talking in a walkie to them, but they're not talking back to him. He like Morse code talks back and they're explaining like there are sharks or whatever. And so all this technology works, but they don't find anything. Um, they end up having to run away from sharks. Um, and then they go back and Alfie is explaining, hey, I have a new idea. And he shows them this sweet <laughs> thing so that they don't get eaten by sharks. It's it, it sends electrical impulses so through stupid. the water to trick a fish's brain into seeing a predator. Yes, because what they say is that fish don't actually see with their eyes that much. I don't know how true any of this is, but they say fish don't actually see with their eyes that much. They see with like sonar, whatever, location. Mm. You see, fish don't really see with their eyes. Their primary vision comes from sonar waves, which form images in the brain. Right. And so we're going to send, he says, brain waves at some point to the fish that, yes, make them see a predator. What did you do? I sent them a brainwave. Watch. Um, and I, this is the scene I was talking about earlier where... Uh, I can't. I have a dinner date. Oh. Could you excuse us for one minute? He says, and I'll have it ready tomorrow because I have a date tonight. And Slade goes, no, you're going to work on it tonight. Oh, okay. And, and, then, and then he <laughs> says to Alex, hey, wait for me outside. I need to chat with my brother. She goes outside. He it's comes so out. Confusing. He comes <laughs> out. And she said, Jonathan, what did you do to Alfie? Nothing. He just lost his appetite. Uh, and he goes, oh, he had a change of heart. He's going to work on it tonight. And Beat she's like, shit what did him. you do to him? And he goes, oh, he just lost his appetite. And I was like, oh, my God. You, this guy 100% is, like, abusive to his brother. Like, I don't yeah. know how else you read that the scene shit out of other than he just beat the shit out of Alfie to force him to not go out on a date that night. So 
Slade and Alex can go out on a fucking date and eat br- and eat lunch and drink beer and dance or whatever. Literally, he's such an asshole. The, the scene Psycho. they're leaving where he beats the shit out of Alfie to stop him from going out. They leave that scene and go have lunch. And I was like, are you fucking kidding me? Such a jerk. Oh, and then while they're at this restaurant, uh, the assassins show up. Our sweet uh, uh, black glass, black ponytailed yes. guy, uh, and shoots the the restaurant singer in yes, the forehead. Yes, yes. So they have an entertainer, and he he goes, he he points out. I, I guess uh, it's like, oh, they must be American, American or yeah, something. He starts singing, at and him. he just grabs, uh, he grabs John, and is just singing himself, and then. Boom! Right in the head. Shot right in the head. And then these guys, they just start unloading and killing everybody in this restaurant, other than our two our two heroes who they're trying to kill. I'm uh give me a second. Yeah. So they just murder everybody in this restaurant, uh, except for our people, our our two heroes are able to like flip over tables and get away, basically. Mm. Um, and then there's a sweet motorcycle chase. Every, in every situation in this restaurant where they're having this shootout, every situation where they're like Oh, they're, they're getting out of cover and they could potentially get a shot. Just somebody in the back's just like getting randomly shot. Yeah. Up. They kill like, like, <laughs> everybody like else seven in the rest- people die in yeah. this restaurant. Almost every other patron in the restaurant is murdered except for our two people who are the, the target of this attack. Uh, sweet motorcycle chase. They're driving. Oh, he must car- be the main character. Why? He's the only person not getting shot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> This car is chasing him down the road, and she's trying to shoot it. And she's like, I can't get a good yeah. shot on and it. And they do the typical uh, yes. sexy motorcycle <laughs> yep. shooting where she swings around to the front and straddles him and then shoots the car, and it fucking explodes or whatever. It's amazing. I love it. I love it so much. Uh, but the editing, again, it goes from she shoots the car as they're driving, like, sexy motorcycle straddle, and then it just hard cuts to Slade sweatily asleep on the couch. Yes. What? Having a nightmare about what? sharks. Eating him, yes. What? And then he wakes up, and then within seconds after that, we cut again, and they're now out in the boat going scuba diving. Ooh. It's like, what just happened? The- it's, it's such a chaotic, weird, breakneck mess of editing. It's I think they may crazy. have ran out of money during the, this film. Something. Well, absolutely. Yeah, something had to have happened. Um, but so they're going to go test their sweet new tech, which is like these little belt packs that, again, project that. And, and I didn't realize it's not just that it makes the sharks or the fish think that there's a, a predator. It turns the person yes, wearing into the belt. Into whatever that is. Yes, it makes insane. them appear to be whatever so that thing is. They have sharks that are coming their way. And now he's like, guess what? You're a killer whale now. He's running away. He thinks you're a killer whale. You got him on the run. Go kick his ass. Sweet computer graphic turns into a killer whale. And it scares the sharks away. It works. They, 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 they swim away. But surprise, a real killer whale shows up yes. trying to fuck. Because it says, oh, it thinks you're a female whale in heat. Oh my God, Jonathan, he thinks you're a female whale in heat. <laughs> so ridiculous. And he's like, oh, don't worry. I'll, and here's what would have been a fun scene. If Alfie played with him a little bit and was like, oh, I'm having trouble switching it off. Uh, oops, I don't know. But he just immediately is like, all right, you're a human again. And then the, the whale. He's probably away. like, fuck an abusive bastard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, honestly, I wouldn't, I wouldn't have been surprised if Alfie just let him get fucked by that killer whale. But, uh, but he doesn't. Yeah, no, I, I did a little Google work, Google, Google homework, and apparently black whale or the killer whales just not not in the Black Sea, not in the Baltic Sea. Everywhere else on the planet, though. No. So but that so they, it makes no sense that there's yeah, a killer whale. Exactly. Unless it like escaped from SeaWorld Kazakhstan Although, or something like that. What does what does the pre 2000s world know? They didn't have Wikipedia to teach them everything. It's true. It's very true. <laughs> I do, and then we cut to the beach again. I have to talk about this line, Kyle. Because it literally makes no sense. I do not understand. I need to break this down. They're talking about, they're now sitting on the beach, Alex and, and Slade are talking about the, you know, the run in with the shark and the killer whale last night. And she says to Slade, What would you do without Alfie? And Slade says to her, for- What would you do without him? For one thing, I wouldn't be waiting for someone to shove something deadly at my ass. End of sentence. That's all he said. Just what does right that there. mean in relation? Without Alfie, I wouldn't be waiting for somebody to shove something deadly up my ass. I guess the implication is that Alfie brings trouble, and that trouble comes in the form 
of somebody trying to shove something deadly up his ass. Oh, he's talking about the whale. Oh. From the last scene, I think. I don't know. It's so strange. It's such a weird line. I do what not know. The, what is it? Uh, it's very weird. Um, but so they, they figured out now that the, they're, they're, they think they're looking in the wrong place because they're not finding mm. anything. They're not finding debris or anything. And they run a sweet computer model. Alfie does. Yes. Uh, but but it's, it's, it, it's in like tech or like language stuff they can't understand. So the only solution they... No, it's not that they can't understand it. It's that it's telling them to go to a certain place, but there's nothing there. Yeah. And the reason they think it, it's basically the information that they're putting into it is incorrect because they think that the CIA gave them incorrect oh, okay. information on purpose and they want to go find the correct information yes, so to model where the plane actually They can't find crashed. it with the CIA technology, so obviously there's only one yes. solution. Got to get the Soviet tech. Yeah, well, information. I guess it wouldn't be Soviet tech here. They're, and they're not getting their tech. They're getting the info. Yeah. It's because the CIA gave them bad info on purpose to okay. keep them from keep finding them the thing. And they're like, we need to find the real info. So they're going to go break into a Russian base to steal that information. And I think it's like weather information or something silly. Mm. Um, they're able to do that. It, nothing really happens. They like stick a little thing on a radio like a satellite dish or something this is hacking yeah whatever um they get the information and they figure out that the the weather information was wrong so they're able to remodel where the plane landed or crashed and like where the debris fell and they're like look we're all looking in the wrong spot so now they know where to go and i love during this scene <laughs> all of, also every hacking scene i think this is on purpose they're always eating during like every hacking scene. They're doing like mm -hmm. the Brad Pitt thing where they're just like eating during their <laughs> scenes because I think it makes it more like realistic and relatable, which whatever, sure. But after they figure out where the- Look, that person's eating food. I eat food too. <laughs> My God, they're so realistic. Yes. Um, I, I love though, they then, they're talking and they reveal, we know where the plane is. It's at these coordinates. And then it cuts over to the shady layer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and the guy in the chair, the person in the chair, turns around dramatically and the camera pushes in. It's Tinsel oh or whatever God. his name is. The blonde dude from the beginning. He's our shadowy evil guy. I don't know if we ever get an explanation of why he's doing this. Is it just money of some sort? Yes, because of the technology that was in the box. That's right. Okay, yeah, it's worth, it's like priceless it's, Unlike most MacGuffins, this does actually have a payoff. Yeah, they do explain what's in the box, which is really stupid. We'll get there. <laughs> At least it seems really stupid mm -hmm. to me, but we'll get there. Um, okay, so then they, they get into the boat, and they're heading out to find this thing. And I was really worried that this whole climax of this film was going to take place underwater. Because mm. Kyle... The it's, filming just does not look good. It, There's no way to convey the you, action. You can't tell what's happening. Mm -hmm. It's just people flailing yep. underwater yep. and it's like what is transpiring like it's so hard to do underwater action well you have it has to be shot really well it has to be choreographed in a way where it's like very clear what's going mm -hmm. on and you have to be really specific with your shots and shot selection and they just have a wide shot of two people <laughs> flailing around and it's terrible luckily um it's only for a little bit they end up finding the the, the briefcase and getting it she's able to retrieve it and they get back up onto shore, but as soon as they get on shore, they're captured. Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, Alfie is also captured. Or no, he gets away, I think, because the guy comes to yeah, try to assassinate in. him. And what? Uh, the, so, like, yeah, how the, gun, the gun gets out of the guy's hand. He kicks hand. it. Alfie kicks yeah, it kicks out of it, his and hand. And it lands in a uh, aquarium. And this is where he had been sending those electrical impulses to, and it, like, shorted or something. Yes, but apparently the electric impulses... Like, so if you're sending those kind of electric mm -hmm. impulses, they're yeah. very minor, yeah, like... no, no, it... it, it this electrocutes the, fi the, fish, the guy. Yeah, the fish aren't affected at all. Yeah, that's, that's what I was gonna say. <laughs> the fish are alive in the aquarium, yeah. but somehow this guy gets electric... I was like, whatever. Okay, sure, fine. So he gets fried. He gets fried, um... Also, that hitman sucks. When he first comes in, Alfie's just sitting there, and he shoots nowhere near him. And Alfie just runs off and turns the lights off. It's terrible. Um, they get out of the water, like I said. They get captured. Um, and then, uh, is this where they get captured? No, there's a boat chase. This isn't even where they get captured yet. Oh, right, right. There's a fucking boat chase, yes. right? Yes. Or is that <laughs> I think this is, I don't remember... This might be after. This, this, uh, for the record, this is just evidence of the editing. 
It's chaos. It's the end, insane. The, the whole movie's chaos. But at one point, there's a boat chase because, and I don't remember, I have it in my notes here, and I don't remember if this is before, after, I think this is before they get captured. Yes. Uh, and, and, then, and then obviously, what you do, uh, oh God, uh, the, the appropriate response oh to a high speed boat chase is scramble jets from the Russian military. <laughs> that makes sense. That's a pretty good, Alfie's got a pretty good trick there. <laughs> he scrambles jets to blow up one of the boats. But the thing that drove me fucking insane about this is they clearly. Although there's one shot in this whole chase scene where you get both boats in the same shot. Mm -hmm. But there are a million shots, Kyle, from the front of our hero boat facing behind them and our guys turning over to look like they're being chased. And nobody. There's no boats behind them. Nope. Why would you do that? Why would you use that? Sh Keep it close-ups. If you're going to do that, if you can't have the boats together, keep it all Just in close-ups. Just look at Speed 2. They did it somewhat right. Oh, my God. I couldn't believe that they kept showing that shot of them like, oh, no, they're gaining on us. N nothing there. There's nothing but there. They get blown up, but Tinsel, like, books it out of the boat. Yeah, the plane blows up Tinsel's boat, but he dives out. Um, and then I think this is where they get up on the shore and they're captured. Yes, yeah. Yes. And I'm not sure why, how they get captured. But Alfie also shows up on the beach, like, immediately. Like, when they land on the beach, Alfie's just there. It's like season eight of Game of Thrones, where this anybody teleports anywhere yep. they need instantly. <laughs> um, then they get taken, and they're being, like, tortured to try to figure out where the box is. And then uh, Tinsel figures out just immediately, oh, she just has it in her, in her wetsuit. <laughs> he just zips it open, and yep. it's just there. And she's like, oh, great. And he grabs her and drags her away. Uh, Slade starts beating up people. Meanwhile, Alfie has met up with Glenn Turman, mm. and they're coming to save the day. <laughs> they're bringing in the cavalry. They, they got humbies out yeah. of the wazoo. <laughs> they drive through like the little toll booth thing, and or the like gate. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> just drive right through it and destroy it. Um, and they all come running in, shooting everybody. Uh, there's a great moment in the climax here where our hero Slade uh, he grabs a chain and swings it over like a oh, any zip lines. <laughs> Zip lines down, and then halfway down, he pulls his gun out of his waist and just starts like randomly, yes. <laughs> randomly firing it everywhere. I will say that that was like so that was just that was just some random gun that he got off of somebody. Yeah, uh, holds a lot of rounds. Yes, it's an infinite gu infinite bullet gun, uh, absolutely. But he just starts shooting everywhere, and they really missed out a slow mo opportunity here because a guy throws a grenade and it explodes behind him. Yeah. Why do we not get a slow mo? Like whatever, just a, really missed out there. Um, anyways, uh, and then they're they're running, and then they just magically end up on the roof again. The editing, there's no connective tissue. All of a sudden, him, uh, Slade, and Alex are up on the roof with <laughs> uh, Tinsel, mm -hmm. and they're both going to shoot each other, and they're both out of. Kyle. Oh no! Oh no! Uh, this fight, <laughs> this this jump that Slade does off of the, the this roof. Yes, he clear like clearly it's it's onto a, a, like some sort of a fall mat or whatever. Yeah. But if it wasn't, it clearly looks like he ate shit he ate all the shit. way. Down. Yes, absolutely, like busted his fucking face open on the pavement or whatever. A hundred percent. He's like, um, but they get into a fight, and I'm like, I gotta be honest. I'm putting all my money on fucking Slade here. He's like eight times this man's size. Yes. He's just gonna like pick him up and yeah, snap they're clearly him in other, they're clearly in different like uh, weight classes. Yeah, this absolutely. Was it's not even uh, close. He gets he gets up. He gets over this railing and then instant cuts to Slade jumping on him again. Yes, that's so bad. It's like this guy Slade can teleport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Again, the editing. There's no continuity. There's nothing, and he just dives and they're beating each other up. There's some really great choreography. <laughs> This is so Some bad. Great it makes Steven Seagal look competent. I don't know if I'd go that far, but it it is pretty rough. I, I forgot that all important like like arm lift up attack on the chin. Yeah, uh, punches him and then just throws him off the building yeah. and kills him as he lands on a car down below or whatever. Uh, that is a Humvee, all right. That is oh a, uh, yes, that's that true. is a structurally sound vehicle. It's true. He throws him off the roof and he dies. Uh, and then. They, we, we, who everybody we win. They go uh, back and oh. we reveal <laughs> what. I got it. Because like, uh, at the, so at this point, at no point throughout this whole thing, uh, Alex says, "We uh, the building's gonna blow. Let's get out of here, yeah. or whatever." Hurry, Jonathan. This place is gonna blow any minute. 
We have not seen anything in the way of explosives put on so far. One. But no, however, we do. How, there's one shot. There's one was this shot. Before or after? It was before, I thought. I, th- I no, remember. It is after. I'll take your word for it. I it remember is. one shot of a guy running past a pillar and sticking like a boop on the side of it. And I thought it was earlier, but I could be wrong. <laughs> I don't remember. Okay. <laughs> Anyways, they get out just in time as it yes. explodes. It, it yeah, looks, yeah, blows it up behind them. But it's also, they couldn't clearly blow up the building, so it's just like a very small explosion mm-hmm. in like the doorway that they try to make look much larger than it is. Um, but they're running out. They have the case. They're talking to Tur- uh, uh, the guy about it, Glenn Turham. And, um, so he's, I got I to gotta find out what this is for myself. He opens, opens it. it up. And it's strontium something. But some isotope it looks, of strontium. It just looks like fucking drugs. <laughs> it looks like a magic purple crystal. Like it just yeah. looks like a like a fantasy. It, it opens up, and I, I I just want to put in the line from Training Day. I didn't know you like to get wet. <laughs> yeah, I know you got secrets. Everybody got secrets. Didn't know you like to get wet though. Because it just it looks like something you can fucking smoke. I guess I thought it looked like more like something that would be on the end of a magic wand <laughs> that, they would, that you would cast I mean, spells it's, with. Yeah, it's, but... it's like amethyst quartz or whatever. Yeah, yeah. It's really dumb. Yeah. Anyways, and he says it's strontium, some or other, another isotope. It's anti-stealth crystals. What? Just a few drops of these crystals plug all the holes in our defense system. Smart rocks. Yeah, and the the way they describe it. He says smart rocks. And he says something like a f- I swear he says something along the lines of a few drops of Ugh. that. A few drops. It's like a crystal. What is it into a liquid? Yeah, what is, I don't a few drops of that uh, will like destroy stealth and would ruin like the the uh, security infrastructure. I don't Anyways, whatever. The, it's a McGuffin. The point is that was Tinsel's plan was to basically sell that. Yes, to the because it's bitter. it's literally like priceless is the implication. Um, but they got it. Uh, we get like a happy woohoo. I'll see you again, Alex. We're gonna make out some other time, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yep. Alfie just is hanging out and they get paid like a bunch of money. Alfie's like, Oh boy, I can't wait to get back into this abusive relationship with my brother. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Happy ending movie. Great. Um, I do want to talk about before we get to the our final verdict on this. I want to talk about, I want to read this review, Kyle. <laughs> okay, this is from IMDb. <laughs> It's amazing. I love it so much. The title of this review. Uh, and uh, so uh, the actor who plays Slade's name is Matt McComb. Mm-hmm. This is the review. Title of the review. Matt McComb is great eye candy. <laughs> Body of the review. This neat little spoof on action genre films. Yes, yeah, spoof. Let's yeah, 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 yeah. This neat little spoof on action genre films has Matt McComb showing off his great bod to full effect. He is definitely some of the best eye candy to hit the screens in a long time. The plot as you... Oh, no. I lost the rest of the review. Where'd it go? Hold on. (laughs) The plot, as usual in this type of B-film, is a bit thin, but it is only a conveyance for the star. Hope we see more of him very soon. <laughs> Somebody big hots for Matt McComb. Oh, God. <laughs> Stop. That was amazing. So ridiculous. So, Kyle, I don't know what I would give this. What do I, you think? I mean, kind of bad, bad. Just yeah, I would say bad, bad. It's... There's not that much wacky yeah, shit. It, like, the, really. The things that are bad are not, like, necessarily entertaining bad. I think they're entertaining. There's entertaining there, there's parts, but it's not bad. like, like there's just, nothing crazy like, wacky. Just making shitty cuts because you your script supervisor apparently just like fell asleep on the yeah, job. Exactly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, that's 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 just kind of. Yeah. It, it's whatever. I mean, it is short. Like it's not long, yeah, which is it's, nice. It's a pretty short film. It's an hour and a half. There's some good moments, but it's also none of the acting is like terrible, terrible, or laughably bad. Uh, I mean, let's face facts, worst acting is Matt. <laughs> probably, yeah, honestly, it is, yeah. Uh, I will say, though, I did think that him and Alfie, apart from the weird abusive aspect of it, they have good at chemistry. Like, they mm-hmm. work pretty well off each other. There's a handful of scenes where they're, like, joking and ribbing on each other that I thought, I was like, okay, they actually work pretty well. I get using both of them as, like, a buddy kind of movie thing. Um, but it's it, there's just not enough silly stuff uh, overall. I would say it's bad, bad. I would agree. As always, you can do us a giant favor by heading over to patreon.com slash GBBB. Support us there. Get access to bonus content uh, and stuff like that. 
uh, I have a podcast called This Film Is It, where we talk about movies that are based on books. When this episode is out, the most recent episode will have been The Handmaiden, 2016 Korean film, The Handmaiden. It won a bunch of awards. It's okay. it's a it's very like famous or not famous, but a very like well reviewed. It's based I'll on a British book, I think, your, or something. I'll take your word on it. I don't know. It's supposed to be very good. Uh, it's called The Handmaiden. I have not we have not watched it yet, so I don't know. Um, uh, uh, tpublic.com, uh, Get some merch. Kyle is going to show you. Sure. I got I got quantum physics. Hooray, Neil Breen. Neil Breen. <laughs> There you go. Uh, go buy your merch, uh, tpublic.com. Just search for Good, Bad, or Bad, Bad, or Quantum Physics. I believe you'll find it. Uh, so check us out on Twitch. Links on the screen. Occasionally stream stuff. And that's it. Uh, yeah. Until next time, keep watching movies. Maybe not, uh, not so subterfuge. Kind of, kind of kind of Unless you want, like, Russian Mike Dicta. Well, we'll go to put every moment of in the room. You better put every moment of the room. All right, I want some defense out there. Let's get those jets scrambled. <laughs>